The following program presents principles designed to promote good health and is not intended to take the place of personalized professional care. The opinions and ideas expressed are those of the speaker. Viewers are encouraged to draw their own conclusions about the information presented. Hello and welcome to Health for a Lifetime. I'm your host, Don McIntosh. We're glad you joined us today. We're going to talk about the skin today. And we have a specialist who deals with skin every day. He's a dermatologist. Derm means skin. And all just, of course, the study of the skin. And Dr. John Chung comes to us from Dalton, Georgia, where he's practiced in dermatology for about 10 years. You have a large practice there that deals not just with the common problems of, a, of you know, children and adult skin problems, but also more complicated things like skin cancer and uh, surgery, plastic surgery, is that there? All these different kind of things? I some of that too. All yes. that together. And so you're probably a pretty busy man there. Do you have other physicians that work with you there? Yes, I do. You okay. know, do you know Dr. Phil Mills? I know Dr. Phil Mills. Yes. yes. I know that's your friend. Yes, he's taking... <laughs> he's uh, my friend too. <laughs> he's your friend too, good. Uh, well, today we're going to talk about some common things that afflict uh, adults and right. their skin. Uh, first of all, why is the skin important? I mean, it's, it helps homeostasis of your, of your body, basically. Keeps balance, so it right. keeps your temperature not too hot, not too cold. That's absolutely right. It, it controls your temperature and also helps um, pathogens from coming into your body, as well as it helps um, uh, you from uh, the sun exposure, mm -hmm. the ultraviolet rays. It has, body has a mechanism to deal with harmful rays. It also helps you lose prevention of the loss of water from you mm -hmm. as a barrier. Isn't that what also helps you get vitamin D, what you need to live? Absolutely. So the skin is really important. It's also important in all of our relationships. We shake hands, we give each other a kiss, we all those different things. That's Without correct. skin, that would not be fun. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know, some of these uh, um, skin problems, I don't pronounce every day as a pastor. I don't get up and <laughs> preach a sermon on acne, although maybe I should. <laughs> But we're going to talk about several, and you're going to help, have to help me with some of these. Rosacea. 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 Rosacea uh -huh. is the first thing. Then, uh, what is it? Perioral dermatitis, psoriasis. If we get time, what are some of the other ones here that we, we have down that we might talk about? Well, different, uh, like, funguses and, and something called, uh, like, seborrheic dermatitis. Okay, so if we get time, but we're going to work down through these, okay. and let's uh, go back to that first one. You're going to have to say it for me again. It's called rosacea. That means rosacea, like a rose. That means like rose, exactly. Like, it's like you look like a red, a red head. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not in terms of your hair, but right, a red face. <laughs> right. Okay. So, like rose. That's what it means. Okay. So, uh, what is this? How does it start? Uh, you know, what causes it? And okay. All that. It's a chronic, like acne-like disorder, but it's not related to acne. Um, and it has papules, pustules, and dilated blood vessels. And um, there's something called rhinophyma, which is, you, you've seen um, WC fields with large lobulated uh, nose. Okay, all those little, yeah. Right, right, that's called rhinophyma, and that's a result of rosacea. Okay, so uh, what, what causes it? You know, we don't know. It just happens. Is it genetic? We don't, know, is it we don't know what causes it. At all. It may or may not be genetic because we don't know the cause. Mm -hmm. But the onset is between 30 and 70. And it's slightly more common in females. Mostly occurs in Caucasian. Mm -hmm. the, but the rhinophyma occurs almost exclusively in men. Thankfully. I mean, the females are all right. side side released there. Okay, so 30 to 70 years old, that's the onset, mm -hmm. and uh, you don't know the cause. Well, we don't know the cause, but there are certain things that make it worse. Such as? Like uh, change in weather, spice, spicy foods, um, hot foods, temperature hot foods. 
mm. certain medications, and alcohol. Alcohol. alcohol and al uh, also the sun. So a lot of people that drink alcohol, you'll see they have that really red face, and that's what right. this is. Exactly. Hmm. So uh, you said climate change. So is it better to live in a place where you don't have the four seasons if you have this, like Arizona <laughs> or? Uh, well, it's, there's too much, too much sun there. Too much sun, sun there. Because so sun can exacerbate those. Where would you live? North Pole, South Pole? <laughs> What's the best climate for it? Or Evan. is there? Evan. Evan's the best place. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Try and get away from that. But there is no uh, favorable climate above others. Well, it's actually is the change in weather. Okay. You know, it's not. It's not. Um, it's not so much the seasons. It's exactly. The it's a ch during the change. During the change. Okay. Uh, so what's the treatment for this? Well, there are multiple treatments. Um, one is topical. Uh, I like to use something called metrogel, and the other m other medication is uh, sulfur-based medication. So metrogel and sulfur. Topical preparations, right? Other words, that you rub all over it. Exactly, and also uh, oral medication that includes tetracycline, mm -hmm. or uh, minocycline, or doxycycline, and uh, sometimes I use something called Z Pack. These medications, Max. yes. Okay. These medications uh, tend to work fairly well in most of the patients. And again, all those that you make sure the person's not pregnant if it's a female. And right. Be very careful exactly. with that. Exactly. And then what about I'll tetracycline with a little kid? This is not a little kid thing, but uh, does that mess up your teeth somehow? Yeah, it can. It can stain the teeth. So what age? Is I would. I would not use. You know, they say eight, age eight, but I don't like to use anywhere, anybody below age um, twelve. Because they still have teeth coming in and whatnot. Yeah, but you know, the liter literature say, and also I talked to a dentist who says it's okay to give anybody above age eight. Okay. But I would just wait. Because if your 12. wisdom teeth are, sta are stained and they're in the back, who cares, right? <laughs> right. You're still wise. <laughs> okay, but that's still a good rule of thumb. Someone watching say, look, uh, watch uh, before age eight for sure um, as well. Is that all we need to say about this one? Uh, yes. I, uh, and also severe, uh, severe rosacea can also be treated with uh, Accutane, just like uh, severe acne. Accutane, that's that thing that dries out all the, um, all of the glands that have the oil there that are causing the problem with the, that cap that's not going off and just kind of dries it out, right? Right. Okay, <laughs> good. I, I'm trying to remember, you know, I'm, uh, from what we've learned. Okay, let's go on to perioral, perioral dermatitis. Right. Is that around it's, your mouth? Yes. Okay. Peri means around. around. Dermatitis means skin. That's uh, inflamed. The inflammation of the skin. Okay. Um, Pyro dermatitis is a, uh, it's like acne-like eruption is micropapules and micropustules around the mouth and usually occurs in young females and usually spares the vermilion borders right there between the lip and the um, lip proper and the chin, it usually spares that area. So it doesn't get right on the lip but it's just right below it. Exactly. And also, you can have a variant of it called periorbital dermatitis, Peri which is around the, the eyes. eyes. Uh huh. But you treat it the same way. Mm hmm. I, I mean, imagine these things. You know, they're easy to talk about, but I mean, if someone gets that and they're a young girl, man, they come in and they're you know they're probably distressed. feeling em embarrassed, distressed. They don't want to go to school. They don't want to do anything. Wearing a hat, probably, or something. <laughs> no, I'm serious. In the emergency room, I had people come in with a ski mask on. They didn't want anybody to see it. Yeah, you feel bad for them. Right. And so what do you do to, or what, what causes it, first of all? Do you know? We don't know. You don't know. <laughs> God knows. You keep saying that. <laughs> okay, so what do you do for it? At least if we, we don't know what it what we know causes. The, we know the treatment. It's very effective. Okay, what's the treatment? It's topical erythromycin. Okay. Or sometimes metrogel and oral like uh, tetracycline or minocycline or doxycycline. Okay. And they tend to be very effective. All right. And uh, how long do you have to take those kind of things? Use it for several weeks. And, and then it just goes it. away? Yes. Goes away. And what I find interesting about this is that when it goes away, it kind of stays away. Hmm. Interesting. Now look, you know, all of these different things that can happen with the skin, is this a reflection of an underlying maybe immune system problem? Perhaps. Hormonal. You just, so. do you ever do tests to figure out what that is? You look, of course, at their white count and all that, 
you know, the white blood cells in their system when they come in? Not, not for this not particular for this condition. Kind of stuff. No, but uh, there are skin conditions where you have to, like, for example, acne fulminans, you need to get the blood work. Right, so when there's that sure. fulminating type of acne. Right, okay. exactly. All right, psoriasis. Right. Okay, well, what is it? Okay. What causes it? What do we do for it? Well, um, psoriasis comes from two Latin words. Sore, S P S O R means itchy. Okay. Psoriasis means condition. Okay. It means itchy condition. But, you know, usually people with psoriasis, they don't itch. So <laughs> it doesn't itch, <laughs> but they it's call it the itchy condition. Right, it's more of a, it's a misnomer. Although there are several uh, significant number of patients who do have itching. Okay. So they call it psoriasis. Uh, what's it look like? Is it, I guess, probably, what, flaked up skin? Right. It, um, it has salmon-colored base with a silvery scale. Okay. The problem with uh, psoriasis, first of all, it affects about 2% um, of U.S. population. Well, 5 million folks. Well, 5 million people. Mm -hmm. And um, in a normal skin, it takes about 53 days. It takes e almost exactly 53 days for your top layer of the skin to go from the basal layer to the top layer. So in other words, it's all, skin is always sloughing off as it moves up. Right. And that usually takes from the very days. baseline to the very top 53 days. Normally. Normally, but, wha but how long does it take in but psoriasis? psoriasis? It only takes seven days. Seven days. So it turns over eight times faster. So that's why their skin gets heaped up. Is this dangerous? Not necessarily, but uh, there's a form of psoriasis that can be dangerous. Okay. Um, now, there are several forms of psoriasis. There's localized there's generalized, and also there's something called eruptive or guttate psoriasis. Okay. And there is a, a kind of an emergency type of form All called right. generalized acute pustular psoriasis of von Zumbusch. Wow, I don't know is, if I could say that. Yeah. But it's a, it, it, you say it's a pustular type, exactly. so there's pustules with it. It's a life-threatening condition, mm -hmm. and it has abrupt onset. It starts with a burning redness, and you form lakes of pus all over the body. And this could just be uh, the reason it's life threatening, probably because all the fluids leaving is kind of like a burn patient. Right, exactly. You treat them just like a burn patient. You have to mm -hmm. hospitalize them. Have you ever had a patient them. like that? No, I haven't. Probably don't want to have one. No, yeah, right. I haven't. That's that's one of the rare dermatologic emergencies. Mm -hmm. And there's other form is um, a localized form. Uh, pustular psoriasis called palmar plantar pustulosis. Okay. That you have pus on your palms, on the palms and soles. Mm. Yes, yeah, and also there's another um, kind of a almost a life-threatening can be form called erythrodermic type when your entire body is red. Mm. And um, if you have a poor heart, you can have uh, you can develop a heart failure. So you have to control that. So the blood, the heart doesn't have to work that hard to supply the redness to your skin. All right. Is there any, are there any other types of psoriasis we want to mention here before we start talking about treatment? Yeah. You know, we didn't, uh, we just briefly mentioned about the uh, eruptive type or, or gut taste psoriasis. Okay. And it has abrupt onset. It's, it's like a rash that comes suddenly and many times it's preceded by strep throat. Okay. And... Um, Many times, this resolves on its own, mm -hmm. but s some patients go on to have chronic type of psoriasis. Okay, so we've given an overview of the common types of problems, but they also talked about some of the unusual things. We're talking with Dr. Uh, John Chung. We're talking about dermatological problems, and when we come back, we're going to look at some treatments. Join us when we come back. Are you confused about the endless stream of new and often contradictory health information? With companies trying to sell new drugs and special interest groups paying for studies that spin the facts, where can you find a common sense approach to health? One way is to ask for your free copy of Dr. Arnott's 24 Realistic Ways to Improve Your Health. 
Dr. Timothy Arnott and the Lifestyle Center of America produced this helpful booklet of 24 short, practical health tips based on scientific research and the Bible that will help you live longer, happier, and healthier. For example, did you know that women who drink more water lower the risk of a heart attack? Or that seven to eight hours of sleep a night can minimize your risk of ever developing diabetes? Find out how to lower your blood pressure and much more. If you're looking for help, not hype, then this booklet's for you. Just log on to 3abn.org and click on free offers or call us during regular business hours. You'll be glad you did. Welcome back. We're talking with Dr. John Chung. We're talking about psoriasis and dermatological problems. And now we're going to talk about some solutions to psoriasis. Right. A very common form of uh, dermatological problem. You said about 2% or 5 million people in America have this, and they all come to your office on Wednesday. <laughs> Maybe not on Wednesday, but... Then they uh, come to our Bible study after that. <laughs> okay, right. right. So, um, uh, you know, by the way, speaking of that, what type of problem do you think Naaman had? I guess it was leprosy. Right. Have you ever seen leprosy? Yes, I have. In, uh, in your practice in Dalton? Yes, yes. Um, two patients. Two patients. Interesting. Well, that's not what we're talking about, though. Right. So let's go back to psoriasis. <laughs> How do we treat psoriasis? Well, there are many, many ways to treat psoriasis. And Give me the top ten. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, one of the best things for psoriasis is ultraviolet light. That means sun really helps. That's why a lot of times you see psoriasis in sun-covered areas. So you don't see much on the face. Okay. Because it's always exposed to the sun. And so it related to that, you have something called PUVA. PUVA? E PUVA, which is sorolin added to ultraviolet uh, A. And um, that is very, very effective treatment. Excuse me, one more time. That is what added to ultraviolet A? Key light? part is called sorolin. Sorolin. Right. Add it to the ultraviolet, ultraviolet way. Ultraviolet A, UVA. That's okay. what, P-U-V-A. All right, so you, it's a, a specific, specific type of a lamp. Right, exactly. Okay. You, take right. A, you, you take a pill and then you go into the la light. All anyway, right, do you have this at your office? No, we don't. You don't? Well, because we have many other t uh, treatments. If it's just localized, you can treat with like topical steroids. Okay. If it's more extensive, I like to use um, something like methotrexate. Methotrexate. Methotrexate is, um, it has a little bit of, it may have a problem with the liver, mm -hmm. and also it can cause a uh, problem with the uh, blood. But and not usually, so you can use it for right. a lot of people. Yes. Okay. One, one drawback with this is that um, it can cause, you have to do a liver biopsy. Uh, when you use that? Paper. Yes. But not, not every day. Not every day. <laughs> Even once is enough. But, I mean, the simple treatment is to go out in the sun. How long? Well, um, we'll talk about that later. Okay. Because the uh, sun can have other beneficial problems. effects, but also it has uh, harmful effects as well. Okay. So what are some other treatments? You well, there's something called cyclosporin. We use it for immunosuppression. Okay. But you have to worry about developing, like, when you're on that, developing other skin cancers and also lymphoma mm. and um, you mean all your treatments you're talking me out of here is there something <laughs> that I'm gonna want well there's mm. another treatment which may be effective called psoriatine which is a um, is a retinoid and okay. um, and what's a retinoid again is retinoid is 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 a vitamin A derivative a vitamin A derivative mm -hmm. it works well for uh, acne okay. but you can use for psoriasis okay. in, a, in an oral form. All right. Now, so, go ahead. Jimmy, there's a very um, exciting and new breakthroughs in psor uh, psoriatic treatment. It's called biologics. Biologics. That sounds, right. sounds like something that uh, John Harvey Kellogg would talk about. Well, it's something that your body produces naturally. Okay. And it's mass produced and usually give by IV or subcutaneous injection. It's, all, it's very pa it's painless and um, it works very well. And this is, many patients are going to this route. Biologics, what are they exactly? So what, what part of your biological system are they? Well, it's things found in your blood. I see. That, uh, that can fight the, uh, the uh, disease of psoriasis. Hmm. And mm -hmm. so you actually, you know, mass produce that and inject it to yourself. So. 
And where would you eject it? Let's say I had psoriasis on my kneecaps. A lot kneecaps. of times on the... Uh, right in the right even there. if it's on my kneecaps, I'd put it in right, the abdomen. Right, because it's systemic. Systemic. It goes throughout right. the system. Exactly. But you have to, you know, make sure you get a TB skin test before you do this. Because if you have tuberculosis, you it don't want to do it. can exacerbate it, right? Oh, I or see. If you, or if you, can get a, if you get a severe infection, you should stop that, too. And um, the problem right now with that is it's very, very expensive. It's several thousand dollars a month. Wow. To treat it. So uh, probably does your, does peop do people's insurance in this country cover it? Many, many insurances do. But that's a very, but it's, it's promising because it doesn't have the, the side effects of the others. Exactly. Okay. So those are the ways to treat psoriasis. Right. All right. Are we ready to move on to the next P? Yes. Well, All right. And let me see if I say this right. <laughs> Pityriasis rosea. Pityriasis rosea, that's correct. Okay, so that sounds like it's pitiful. <laughs> <laughs> what does pityriasis mean? Pityriasis is like bran-like. That's what it means. Uh, okay, it's like a, like a piece of bran flakes? Uh -huh. or right, exactly. Bran cereal. Right. Okay. <laughs> Either one. All right, so. And basically what it is is an acute, acute eruptive uh, rash. Mm-hmm. Uh, occur mainly on the trunk, and it has something called Christmas tree distribution. Well, that when sounds at, festive. Yeah, look at look at <laughs> somebody's back and it looks like a Christmas tree. It, it, yeah, it has a if you if you use your imagination, it can look like Christmas tree. But it's certainly not a present. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so uh, you know, not to make light of it all, because you know, it's probably very painful. No, it's not painful. It's, it's not painful. It's, it's almost asymptomatic. Okay. It's, sometimes it itches a little bit. All right. But it lasts about six to eight weeks. Mm -hmm. And um, usually before one to two weeks prior to getting this eruption, you have something called herald patch. Usually what, what that is is, is a, a patch usually on the trunk that mm -hmm. almost looks like a fungus. And people treat that for fungus and they come in. And it's, it's funny when some, some people come in with just that and you have to scrape it, make sure there's no fungus there. And a lot of times you can recognize that. And you tell this person, in one or two weeks, it's you, may get, get a lot worse you may get this. another okay. rash. And when they come, they're very surprised. You know? But you know, they know that it only lasts about one, uh, six to eight weeks. Mm. So uh, what does that happen? Is that little uh, spot then just kind of multiplies? Is that what's happening? Uh, I don't know if it multiplies, but it just kind of appears I almost see. overnight and we don't know the cause again <laughs> but it may be associated with something called herpes 7 virus herpes 7 yeah there are many types of herpes and uh, we don't know and the best treatment for this is ultraviolet B ultraviolet B like right. another like a sun lamp thing or something sun lamp or sunlight mm -hmm. especially if you started within the first week uh, it helps with the resolution quicker also helps with the uh, symptoms. So maybe it sounds like people in the United States aren't getting enough sunlight. Well, I think they're getting too much, but um, in this case they're not. So is this all we have about pityrosis rosea? Did I say that right? Pityriasis rosea. Pityriasis rosea. Right. Okay, well let's move on to, well, I think the fancy word I'll let you say, but to dandruff. Seborrheic dermatitis. Okay, seborrheic dermatitis. Let's talk about that. We got about four minutes. You think we can cover it in four minutes? Yes. Let's it, do it. It is very common, and what it is basically red redness and scaling that occurs on the scalp and central part of the face, mm -hmm. and um, pre-sternal area right here, and also the folds. Okay. And you heard of cradle cap? Cradle when, cap. Yeah. When, when the, the kids are, are born, born with that. Yes. Right. And um, this they think it's maybe due to uh, a yeast called Pterosporum ovale. Pterosporum so, ovale. Mm -hmm. okay. And um, this you know, may be associated with that. And so you treat a lot of times with antifungal and it helps. Mm. But initial treatment for this is over-the-counter uh, shampoos that you can use like uh, tea gel or uh, salsam blue type, that type of a shampoo. Mm -hmm. They can help with this condition. And uh, in prescription shampoo, you have uh, like Loprox or, you know, Nizoral shampoos and stuff like that. And so you just prescribe this, they 
take it and how long does it take? What's that, what does the prescription do? Does it just like make sure it doesn't flake off too soon or does it treat well, the underlying well, it's cause? Slow, it's, it, uh, I mean, you can't really treat the underlying cause because it's cause is always there. We don't know the cause. I mean, we know the cause, that's the ovale, but it doesn't actually kill it. It keeps on producing, but you, because a lot, of, a lot of people actually carry this on their skin. Mm. And so... Um, what are you going to do? I mean, it's there, right, you can't get there. rid of it. Exactly. You can't scrub it off, right. nothing like that. But, you know, when they come into the office for a very quick resolution, mm -hmm. we give them uh, topical steroids, mm. and, um, w as well as topical antifungal and some type of a sofa type of a wash. Mm -hmm. So you can help rapidly if someone wants to go in and, exactly. and, and be seen. Okay, the That's next thing... That's all you can talk about, yeah. Can we go, go to ahead. the next one? Yes. Okay, let's see it. Tinea versicolor. Tinea versicolor. Tinea, Tinea versicolor. Is again, is caused by the same organism. And what is it exactly? Tinea, Tinea versicolor. Is like a little worm? No, <laughs> it's a, uh, a rash that you get in, a, in humid climates, usually, okay. on the trunk okay. and on the uh, upper part of the arms a lot of times. And it's usually white scales or fawn colored scales fawn colored you know like the deer fawn like the dot like those right. little spots they have right exactly okay and uh it may also be due to um uh the pterosporum ovale same things causing it but it's right. down a different kind of part of your body right and same kind of treatment then you, you i what i like to use is something called uh Nizoral shampoo you put on for five minutes five minutes it's that's gone. it and then you do, I do that for about three days. Yeah, and people must come to you and you say, well, that's the problem, and then they, get, they say, man, I just went in and it just took that long. And <laughs> you feel almost guilty. You helped them so quickly, don't you? Do you, you get a little twins of guilt? That's why I have to give them revelation seminar during the same time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, actually, you know, it's, it, it sounds kind of funny, but you do make sort of a spiritual connection with people when you're helping them. Right. And uh, just that that little touch, you know, like that song, the touch of the master's hand, and then the following in his, his footsteps, you have mastered a lot of these diseases, and your help, it's very helpful for people to come see you. Now, you know, the other thing I want to just point out as I listen to you, as I reflect on it, there's a lot of things that we often just put up with that if we just went to get help, they can be taken care of rapidly. Very easily. Very I, easy. I had one, one patient one time uh, had a fungus, wasn't treated for had a rash on his uh, back part for over 10 years. He was suffering with it. Mm -hmm. And within two weeks, he was completely cured. Wow. I mean, that's a spiritual lesson in itself, isn't it? Many times we just go on and we should go to uh, the healer, the master healer, and he can just in a moment uh, deal with things that we shouldn't be struggling with. Thanks so much for being with us, and thank you for being with us. We hope you have health that lasts for a lifetime.